and welcome to the Pixie Dust Designs YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and today I am crafting with one of the latest releases from Pixie Dust Designs. This one I love because it actually helps you to create very easily a side stepper card. I've already taken the largest die in this set and that's going to cut out your card base which when folded will still be able to fit into a USA 2 size card. But before I do any folding, I am just going to do some stenciling. This stencil that I'm using, it actually has a, a bunch of different patterns on it, but one of them is a lovely brick pattern. I'm using two different shades of kind of a light tan um, and a brown to get a very almost distressed. I'm not going for a perfect stenciling, so I don't mind if there are some areas that are a little bit lighter, some areas a little bit darker. I'm intentionally kind of going for that look. And I'm using some low-tack washi tape to one, hold down my stencil to my card base, but also on the right-hand side, there there is a different pattern and it butts up pretty closely to the brick pattern. So I wanted to make sure to mask that off so that I don't accidentally uh, stencil into that other area where I don't want. So if you are working with a stencil like this one where you've got multiple patterns on the same stencil, and you want to only use one pattern, be sure to mask off with just a little bit of tape the areas that you don't want to accidentally stencil through. I'm only stenciling on what's going to be kind of the frontmost um, of our card here. And the die does put in that cut line that you see and all the score lines here. So you can see you can fold this completely flat and you get that really nice side stepper and um, a more sort of recessed panel in the back as well. So lots of fun ways that you can decorate this. And this is just a really great card base. So this die set is super, super versatile because even though it is designed so that you can create this house, you really could decorate this base however you want and um, you don't have to convert it into a house if you don't want to. It's just at the end of the day, a really great card base die. So really fantastic. And even though you can make side steppers without any specialty dies, you know, having the die makes it really fast, really easy. So I've got this other panel here and it measures uh, two and a quarter wide by just under three inches tall and I'm inking it with the same colors that I stenciled that brick pattern. This is going to go into onto that back stepper portion but it's still going to be the front of my house. And what I'm gonna do is score at every quarter of an inch. And that gives this a very, it almost makes it uh, look a little bit like siding. That was the look I was going for. So it's still going to um, be part of the house. It's just going to have a different, sort of a different finish to it. So, um, so I'm gonna glue that onto that panel um, on the back there and it just gives us a little bit different color a little bit more texture and so now I'll start to actually put together the other elements that come in this die set which will help you to create um, convert this side stepper into a house so you've got one die that will cut out your roof as you see it there. There's um, actually two dies that cut out grass and one will stretch the entire width. So this is uh, going to be a landscape top folding card and will measure approximately four and a quarter by five and a half when it's all folded. Kind of depends, the final measurement sort of depends on whether, uh, like if, whether you do what I've done here where the roof overhangs a little bit to that left hand side. So just depending on how you attach things, um, you might end up a little bit 
a little bit larger than A2 if, um, if you're assembling it the way I am. The die also comes with some doors and some um, additional embellishments so you can create that, that window at the top of the front door. There's also a uh, window die as well with the frame that goes around the window. So I've cut, so for both that semicircle window that goes above the door and this rectangle window, I die cut um, the back piece from some pearlescent card and then um, there's a separate die that actually cuts out the the frame or the molding that goes around the window. So really, really great details here. And later um, you'll see how I make this uh, look a little bit more uh, glass-like. But I decided that I want this other portion of the house here to also have uh, some roofing on it. So I've die cut another roof layer and I'm actually, I'm not gonna uh, attach this so that it's flush all the way to uh, that top fold. I'm actually going to raise uh, this portion of the roof a little bit, a little bit taller than, um, than this step here. And that just gives me just a little bit more space to work with on that, on that side step. So there you can see I've attached that roof almost like half an inch higher than that fold line. So you've got a lot of flexibility on, on um, what you want to do, uh, how you want to create your house. But by uh, touching the roof a little bit higher, I've given myself a little bit more room to add this uh, window here on the side. If you didn't want that to be a portion of the house, there is another rectangular die that cuts out a really nice matte layer. So you could use that area to actually add your sentiment, for example, uh, if you wanted to do that instead. And the die also includes, there's a, there's actually a uh, lot of little floral dies. Um, now two of them will cut out uh, an entire flower with the stem and a leaf along with it. And then there's coordinating dies that will just cut out the flower itself. And that way you can actually layer these up, which I really, I really like that the, um, that there's a die that has the full flower. So you can just layer a second piece directly on top where the f actual flower, head of the flower is. And before I start getting into assembling and all the die cutting for the flowers, I thought what I would do is actually add some diamond glaze to the windows. And that's going to give it a lot of shine to make it actually look like it is, um, uh, shiny like a window would be and reflective like a window would be. So diamond glaze, if you haven't heard of it, it's very similar to something like your glossy accent. So um, lots of different brands have something similar now. I think Nuvo has, um, Nuvo, you can always use their clear um, Nuvo drop. And I think Spectrum Noir has one uh, that's equivalent as well. I think they call theirs... Um, they call theirs glossy highlights. So lots of different options there. And here are all the little flowers. So it's really easy to assemble these because you have, I've die cut the, the full flower out of green. And then I die cut the, um, just the flower head out of a combination of some pinks and some uh, lilac. Uh, colors. So really, really easy to assemble. All you have to do is just um, layer the flower right over top of uh, that base. And I, one of the, the flowers that I'm attaching now, it does also cut out a small little itty bitty uh, circle that you can use as the center of your flower, but I just put some Nouveau drops. <laughs> 
<laughs> there instead so that I just didn't have to worry about working with all of those little, little itty bitty circle pieces. So, um, but if you don't have Nouveau drops, you could certainly, um, use the actual little die cut that, that does come with the set. So the other um, accent that you get is there's another die for the roof that, that will actually just cut out individual shingles. And what's nice about it is that it's, it's a single die, but it cuts out all of all, um, all five uh, shingles on the roof. So that's really convenient because you just run it through the one time and then you get all of the pieces. I'm going for a roof that is a little bit two-tone, so I didn't actually use all five of the um, the matte layers for the shingles. And they do also have this really great stitched edge, uh, stitch border detailing on them. So that's really cool. I'll have to die cut another, um, another round here so that I can have, um, the right size pieces because they, they are designed, um, and shaped so that they do fit very specific, um, spots on your roof. So I've got, uh, my second one in place here. And so it's just a nice little extra detail. You can um, have them all be the same or have them be different. Like I've, uh, I've done it here. And then I decided just to give more illusion of shine. I used a white gel pen and just did some streaks on um, the areas that are meant to be glass. So just a nice little detail to help kind of sell that look. And then um, I decided last minute, I actually want to create a, um, a sort of an easel stand for this. Normally, when I do this, I, um, I like to attach it a little bit differently, but I'm cutting a piece that is three inches uh, by what will end up being five and a half. And along that three inch edge, I scored it at uh, three eighths of an inch on both sides. And then I just miter the corners off of one end because that will be a glue tab. And normally when I make these easel stands, I will attach this glue tab to the back of the card, but this time I'm going to attach it to the front. And the only reason for that is because I already have that nice grassy border on the front of my card. And so I, I didn't want to have to cover that up. Um, but what this easel stand does is it will make your, uh, stepper card actually stand a little bit better so that it doesn't do that giraffe leg where it just um, continues to kind of spread out and, and flatten over time. And so this is a really easy kind of optional thing that you can do for any stepper card or or any you know top folding card if you want it to stand um nicely without uh, kind of doing that giraffe like effect. So I've just got something under my card so that I can I can actually view this the way that that uh, somebody who has it on display would be seeing it. So that it just makes me just makes it a little bit easier to kind of compose things to see how things look. So um, so it is on the easel stand, but then it was also propped up on the back there just just to make this process a little bit easier and easier for you to see on camera um, how I'm uh, attaching everything. When I, when I glued down the grass, I was careful only to put a line of glue just along the very bottom because I knew I wanted to tuck these flowers in behind those blades of grass. And so um, that's something that I forgot to mention as I was gluing down that grass, but I wanted to make sure that there was um, a little bit of a gap, a little bit of room back there so that I can easily kind of just tuck these flowers in here and there.
And so that just um, kind of gives me a nice little row of, of flowers um, at the front of our house. And you can see the, um, the easel uh, stand really helps to uh, keep this upright. And so you know it's, it's not going to continue to kind of spread. But I decided to go ahead and actually decorate the back uh, for two reasons. One, so that you could see normally, uh, as I mentioned, the glue tab, instead of gluing it to the front of the card like I did just a moment ago, I would be I would have glued it to the back and before I decorated the front. So here's what I would have done, but I think it's going to make the, the back look nice and tidy too. So what I would have done was just attached my my grass blades to my easel stand. So that's that's the stopper that is uh, preventing our card from um, kind of uh, folding down. And so th that way I have the grass blades as um, that easel stopper becomes part of the scene. And the only reason why I did things a little bit reverse was because I had already glued down <laughs> that layer of grass. So I didn't want to um, risk peeling that off. So there's always multiple ways of doing things. I kind of like how this ended up um, also because then the back is decorated too and this would be where you would write your message. So if you wanted to stamp a sentiment back here and you know write your message and sign the card, that makes the back a little bit um, fun and have a little bit of decoration too, as if it was the back of the house. So I hope that you enjoyed this um, card. I'll leave links to everything in the description box below. Thanks so much for joining me. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.